Hi everyone, today I'm making protein sparing chips and homemade ranch dip to go with it. I'm Anita from ketogenicwoman.com where I share keto recipes and carnivore cooking ideas. If you're new here, please hit the subscribe button and check out some of my other videos. Welcome back to all you returning viewers. Okay, so today we're making chips and dip. These chips kind of came about accidentally. Um, for those of you who have seen my uh, pasta noodles, the carnivore pasta noodles that I did for protein sparing a couple weeks ago. While I was experimenting, I accidentally made some crackers instead of pasta noodles. I ended up making some dog treats out of those. And then the dog treats are quite edible actually. Um, you know, uh, I found myself doing this because they were so crunchy. Dogs love them. So from the dog treats, I got the idea to make chips. A couple of viewers, you know, were going, hey, chips, crackers, uh, you could do that. So, so I did. Um, I'm gonna do chips because I found that the crackers were too hard and crunchy. I felt like if anyone had any compromised dental issues, they, they would probably break a tooth on them. They were just too hard, but the chips were good. So, and you can flavor them any, any way you like, salt and vinegar, chili lime, whatever, big, everything bagel, seasoning, or just salt and pepper. Um, so that's what I'm going to do today. And it honestly is the same basic recipe as those pasta noodles. So I will repost that down there as well as a link to the noodles. Um, and I, but I'm, I'm just gonna go through with making the batter again, right here. So let's get started. So you need a blender and some egg whites. I'm going to put in two thirds of a cup of egg whites. Thank you to the brilliant viewer who suggested I use a canning funnel for my narrow mouth blender here because that is so much better. Two thirds of a cup of egg white goes in here and I'm going to put in some ground chicken that I have pre-cooked here. Oh, I've got uh, 30 grams of low-fat mozzarella cheese. Not the fat-free, it's just the reduced fat. So 30 grams is about an ounce, so that's going in there. And I need uh, 100 grams of the cooked chicken. I do prefer to use ground chicken as opposed to regular cooked chicken. I don't know why, I, I think you could use either. 100 grams is about three and a half ounces. And a pinch of salt. I'm gonna put in a um, quarter teaspoon salt. Probably a little more than I did for the pasta, but I'm making chips, so chips should be salty. And you want to blend that until it is super smooth, like baby food. Okay, so I'm making one batch of the batter, but I have two pans here. And that is because for the crackers, we're going to spread this out much thinner than the pasta. So I'm going to try to put half of this on each of these. So what, what this is going to look like is we're going to spread it out super thin on two pans, put it in the oven to bake for just a few minutes, just until it's set. Then turn the oven down to the lowest setting. Now, if I had a dehydrator, I would definitely do this in the dehydrator. I do have this big toaster oven over here that has a dehydrator setting. So what I'm going to do is put half or as much as I can get in there and then the rest will be in the regular oven and we'll see which one. I mean, you know, I made them in the regular oven before on the lowest setting, which on my oven was 120 degrees uh, Celsius. I honestly don't know what that is in Fahrenheit, but I'll look it up. Um, so anyways, I'm going to pour the batter now, half over here and the other half here. It should look like cream of wheat or baby food, you know, that kind of consistency. 
and I'm going to spread it as thin as I can. This is an angled spatula, which does the job really well, but if you have something else, that some kind of spatula, that should do it. So for those of you who, who have made the noodles, you know that this is one batch, and we're making two batches out of it for the purposes of crackers. My oven is ready. I set that to 350. Okay, that's about as good as it's going to get. If you give it a little shake like that, you can see it kind of flattening out. All right, so these are going to go in. I'm going to check them in five minutes because I don't want them to burn. So we've got, uh, this one was on the bottom tray and you can see it's uh, on the bottom rack. So I'm just gonna give it a moment to cool. Um, we've already got some crispy edges there. And then, yeah, so we just need a moment for it to cool down and then I'm going to score them and one will go back in the oven and one will go in the dehydrator. Okay, so I am just going to do some scoring here, just light scoring to break these up into individual pieces and they don't have to be uniform. We've already got some chips on the end here. Mm. All right, so before I lift those up, I really liked the tangent spice when I made these last time. So I'm just going to put those on there. You actually could do this. It's probably better to do this at a sooner state. I think I, uh, I cooked these maybe a little bit too long, but they'll still have some. So I'm just putting them in here um, because like you, you can't put them in when the dough is obviously runny the way it was because it would just run right through there and all over the bottom of the oven. So they are going in now while it's safe. And you can break them apart more later. That's why I, I scored them so that they would be easy to break apart later when they're more dry. So that's probably about all that is going to fit in there. Maybe one more little one. Okay. So those are going into the dehydrator for about five hours, but I'll check them sooner. So off they go. The rest of these will go in the oven. So what I want to do in the oven is get a little air under them. So I'm going to put them on a rack with a piece of parchment paper on top. And again, you know, it doesn't really matter that some of them are, are broken, they're chips. When you buy chips in a bag, a lot of them are broken. Unless they're Pringles, but we won't talk about that. This one's a little softer. It's gonna be trickier to get off because I took, maybe took it out a moment too soon. I really like this seasoning. If you haven't tried it before, it's called Tajin. I probably didn't pronounce that right. Um, but what's in it, it, it's like a chili lime flavor. So it has chili peppers, sea salt, citric acid dehydrated lime juice, silicon dioxide to prevent caking. No artificial colors or flavors. This is not candy. Good to know. <laughs> All right. I think I'm going to have to be more careful lifting these up because I didn't let them bake quite long enough. But that's okay because they're going to be great later when they're completely dry. Actually, what I'm going to do, because these ones, I didn't have them in long enough and they're hard to get off, I'm going to just put them in the oven as is, again, on the, on the top rack. And when they dry a little more, then I'll be able to take them off and put them there. So that's gonna be for about five hours and then we will try them out. So while I'm waiting to take the chips out, I've got my dad's apron on again, and I did find a picture of him wearing this apron. Um, so you, you'll be able to see that picture here or here. I don't really know where, somewhere, here. You'll be able to see that picture here. 
And uh, yeah, this is, I think this is my favorite apron of his, of his aprons, so. All right, so when you have chips, it's nice to have some dip. So I am going to make uh, some ranch dressing. Uh, I, I always make this up in advance. I, I have run out, so I'm going to make a whole jar and, and I'm just gonna use a teaspoon or so for the dip for, for these chips. But it is so easy. Um, I just, I have a few favorite things that I put in mine. And uh, to keep it simple, I just use one tablespoon of each of these seasonings that I'm about to do. And the nice thing about making your own seasoning mixes is you absolutely 100% control whether there's any sugar in it or other ingredients. Um, and so that's, that's really why I like to do it. Um, also, the things I'm putting in, if you don't like dill weed, you can put in more parsley or you can, you know, whatever, like it, you, you control everything. So I'm basically make, putting in one tablespoon of each of these. So that was chives, dried chives, dried dill, one tablespoon. Dried parsley. Onion powder. You could also do, um, I've done before when I didn't have onion powder, those little tiny dehydrated onion flakes, that works too. And garlic powder. And I'm going to put in some, this is my, my salt and pepper mix that I like. White pepper, because I can't do black. So I'm gonna put in about a half a tablespoon of that. But again, when you make it yourself, you call the shot, so whatever you like. And then you can shake it up or stir it with a fork, whatever you like, just get it all mixed up together. Mm, it smells good. And this, when I do this, it reminds me, I don't know if you ever tried those Uncle Dan's seasoning mixes, you know, the ranch, they had dilly dip and ranch and a few other ones. I always thought those, they were so good, but you know, you read the ingredients. This tastes very similar, but it's uh, clean ingredients. I'm going to use half a cup of plain Greek yogurt. And this particular yogurt is Liberté. It's a Canadian brand, has six carbs per three quarters of a cup. So I'm sure you can, you know, if you're not in Canada, I'm sure there's probably a similar product on your grocery shelves. And this will be enough for a couple of people later. Then, going to mix in probably a teaspoon and a half of the ranch mix. Maybe a, t maybe a teaspoon, I can always add more later if it's not enough. And just mix it in. And then this can sit in the fridge for a few hours while these chips are baking and dehydrating and that'll give it time for the flavors to blend nicely and then we can try it later with our chips. Okay so I'm going to put that in the fridge and just before just before you go I'm going to take those last few um, chips out of the oven the ones that I couldn't get off the silicone and I'm going to transfer them to the drying, what I'm calling the drying rack. Just check and see if they're ready yet. Yeah. All right. Let's see how they are doing. Yeah. At least now they're coming off. So I'm just going to grab the other pan and get these chips on there. So that's going back in see some of them are already curling a bit, getting more crispy. About another four hours. I'm going to go and visit my mother in the nursing home. Thank you for everyone who's been asking about her. She is doing a lot better. She's off oxygen and sitting up, so that is a good sign. So I'm going to go see her and then 
by the time I get back, hopefully these will be almost ready and we'll give them a try. We'll talk to you later. Okay, it's been about four hours now or so, maybe five. Um, I'm going to bring out the, the chips. I've got a tray in the oven and a small tray in the toaster oven slash dehydrator. Got my dip here. Now, the dip is really thick, like it's really thickened up even more. Um, it is made from Greek yogurt, which is already thick, but the uh, dried chives and parsley kind of soaked everything up. So. I am going to add a little bit of unsweetened almond milk to thin this out a bit. Um, unsweetened almond milk is good for protein sparing days. If it was a keto day, you could add cream to this, mayo, um, you know, things like that. But just want to thin this out a little bit because this will break the chips for sure, the way it is right now. So put in at least a couple of tablespoons in here. Okay, so I'll just show the camera over here. So that's, that's a little better. It's not going to break the, the chips. So I'm going to bring out, these are from the dehydrator. So as you can see, they're, they're super crispy looking. I'm going to break some of these apart. They're a little big. Take one here and give it the dip test. Mmm. So these are, um, if you're looking for something to compare it against, they are um, about as thin as like a Lay's potato chip or something. They're, they're pretty thin. I do recommend having a dip with these though because they, while they are crispy and thin and light, they also have no fat in them. And the fat in the chips that you buy at the store in the bags, um, that's what makes them kind of moist. And so these are, are thin, crispy chips but they're they're dry and so and they're ta they're tasty but they're dry and so they really benefit from having a dip and i could just now stand here and eat these all day <laughs> let's grab the ones from the oven now okay so these So these ones were in the oven. They are, they don't look quite as light. And I, I'm guessing it's because the oven temperature is higher than the dehydrator. Let me just give it a try. Mmm, they're still very good. They're a little bit browner. Now I did, you know, don't be fooled by the color. I mean, I did get the seasoning I, I got a lot of seasoning on here, but I think that it's not all seasoning from, you know, this color. Some of it is that it was in an oven. My lowest temperature is 170. I think dehydrating is usually between 120 to 160, um, somewhere in there. Uh, so, you know, these, but they're still very chip-like. Um, I kind of like I'm not really sure which ones I like better now. So maybe I'll have to try another one. They're both good. <laughs> Even though they're dry, they're strangely addictive. I don't know, there's something about them. So they're high protein, low fat. I'll What I'll have to do is just give you the macros for the whole batch and you'll have to figure out how many you eat and what that means to your macros. Um, it's gonna be you know, pretty forgiving if you have a handful of these with the zero fat yogurt. It's gonna fit into your protein sparing. It's probably even gonna boost your protein up a little bit. So I don't think there's a problem with that. Um, it so gives you something to eat on a Friday night when it's movie night with your family or, or whatever and they bring out the 
you know, the chips and the popcorn, you've got something. So I hope you uh, give it a try and let me know what seasonings you put on it, whether you tried it, how did it work? Is there a better way I could have done this? I would love to hear from somebody who has something like one of those big dehydrator machines with all the different levels. Um, but, you know, I got quite a few chips here out of this, so I could have put the both trays in the oven. I didn't have to have them both going, but I, I just kind of wanted to see the difference. So I think, uh, I think it's a fun thing to try and it might give you a good protein sparing snack, you know, for a weekend or something. So see you next time. No, don't like the leakers. Are we rolling? Are all right, yeah, we're rolling, yeah, we're rolling. <laughs> In here, it's not supposed to be a surprise for me. Surprise! <laughs> here we go. Okay, I'm going to give you a surprise. But as long as it's happening in this little area, you should not be concerned. I'll have another chip while I think. <laughs>